I'd like to welcome you to the British Quilt and Stitch Village. This is the first event that we've held here at the Utoxida Racecourse. And I'm with Angela Price, who's our event manager, and Carolyn Moyes, who uh, is one of the executives here running events at the show at uh, Utoxida. Tell us, what sort of uh, facilities do you offer here? Because there's an awful lot of people I noticed today. Sure, it's, we have a fantastic venue here. It's central to the country, with plenty of parking here as well, lovely open countryside. So, brilliant venue for this type of event. Lovely to see it so busy here today with so many people coming from all over the country to, uh, to visit the, the show. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's fantastic to see so many different stalls and it's been laid out brilliantly. I think it's working really well. Angela, you've yes. done an amazing job Thank you very much. with the show and getting everybody here. Thank you. As this is our first show here, yes. how do you feel about it? I'm all? absolutely delighted today. It's been a lovely, lovely day, and all the hard work's been worth it. And uh, thank you to all the volunteers as well that have helped us put this together, all the hanging of the quilts and the embroideries. And everybody says it's much, much more to do this, this year. Um, we've got a whole separate room of embroideries. We've got lots, lots more quilt entries, probably double the entries as before. All the workshops are nearly full and it's doing really, really well. It's great. Well, look at the time. It's nearly two o'clock yeah. and the hustle and bustle here it's, is still, it's still tremendous. Buzzing. They're still coming in. Have we got more stands here than other, yes. uh, other ones that have been before? Yes, us? many, many more stands. We're absolutely full, chocolate block full. And, and we've what? got 26 books for next year already as well. 26 um, books for next yes, year? Yes, and let, some lady said she needs double the space. So, so really, people should get their bookings in yes, as soon as yes, possible. Absolutely. And the advance tickets for next yes, year. Yes, the advance tickets are the way in because it's, you get in straight away with an advance ticket and you save an awful lot of money as well. So. And there's such a tremendous variation. Yes. Give us some idea of the people yes. who are exhibiting here. Well, there's lots and lots of quilts, obviously, but we've got a lot of embroideries as well. We've got some special collections to show people as well. Die Huck collection is here, who um, Diane Huck sadly passed away recently, um, editor of Patchwork and Quilting magazine. Um, we have her collection on show, that she wanted to do that for our show because she loves this show. Uh, we also have the Amish quilt collection, which has been built up over 25, 30 years um, from a, a lovely couple. And they are now selling some of their quilts as well. So it's a very rare chance to buy some Amish quilts that they've gone to America and specially bid on at auctions for. So we've got all those. Uh, we have um, the Scottish champion Kay Bell. We've got a quilt from her. And Lindsay Upton, who also won at Houston. We've got her award-winning quilts. So there's an awful lot to do, and that's only just in one room. And then upstairs, we have lots more quilts to see. We have traffic publication stand as well to meet the editors. It's very exciting. We've got the editors of British Patchwork and Quilting and Surrey World magazine. And they are meeting the public in time slots so they can talk to them and see how you can put a magazine together. So that's very exciting. We've also got the 10 megas of Cairo that we've brought in from Egypt. And he's um, a lovely man, Hanny, is sitting demonstrating live on the stand. And he's engaging all the ladies around him and showing how he does his 10 Well, I can hands. tell you, he's so good, like the guy with the razors. I <laughs> liked it so much, I bought, bought one of his quilts. Have you really? I bought yeah. one of his quilts. <laughs> well, I know a lady bought two before the show opened. She was uh, one of the stall holders. And talking to stall holders, we've got absolutely loads of stalls this year. So you've got everything Packed. here you could, yes. you could make a quilt with? Yes. From sewing machines Threads, to needles? Needles, sewing machines, um, everything for embroidery and quilt making. And we also have a gentleman selling lights um, to actually view, you know, magnify your work. So, yeah, absolutely everything. We even have a guitar guitarist in the cafe to keep everybody calm and relaxed while they're having their coffees and cake. Uh, David Jags, and he's got his CDs there as well. So he's playing beautiful music in the background. So, so if you're into quilting, yes. everything is here yes, to make everything. your heart sing. Yes. And to make your wallet lighter, but have a wonderful, wonderful and day. lots and lots of workshops as well. Brilliant workshops. So Good. tell us a little more about the workshops. We've got um, six or seven workshops going on at one time. We've got um, talks as well that they can go to. Um, you can book in advance of workshops, or you can just turn up at the information desk here and book on the day. But we do advise that you book in, a, in advance, because the sewing ones in particular sold out straight away. And there's wow. 24 brand new faff machines that we've got for people to use, but they all sold out those workshops. So it's that's been fantastic. Very, very popular. So yeah. that's the name to remember, the British Quilt and Stitch British Village. British Quilt and Stitch Village. Yes. It is the name to remember. Yes. So this is going to be the quilt show to it end is. all quilt shows. And you, you really want to be a winner at the British Quilt and Stitch Village. So we have competition entries as well that people can now enter for next year for 2014, and we have a special theme next year of Lest We Forget. And that is because it's 100 years since the beginning of the First World War. 
and also it's 70 years since D-Day next year in 2014. Well, I can see an amazing faff sewing machine over there. Yeah. Tell me, that was a prize, I believe. Yes, that's it looks nine, amazing. It's over £900 worth of machine, kindly donated by FAF, our main sponsor of the show. And that is for the overall champion. So um, we're very excited at 2 o'clock on Sunday to be presenting that prize. But we have um, 11 prizes uh, similar to that for all the categories. There's one winner and they all get a lovely silver plate like that in the, in the box. And they also get a sponsor's prize as well and a certificate and a rosette. And then we have second and third prizes too. So it's, it's brilliant. Everybody should enter because um, just to see everybody's work up is so exciting. I was amazed at the craftsmanship that I'm seeing here from this Egyptian gentleman. Joan Fisher here knows a lot about him and can tell us something about these incredible quilts that he makes all by hand. Joan. Um, Hani comes from Cairo in Egypt. He lives um, near the Khan El Khaimia, which is the street where the tent makers work. There are now about um, 30 stitchers left in, uh, in Cairo actually doing this work. Um, so it is a dying art, so we would like to keep it on working. Hani himself has been uh, learning his craft for over 30 years. He first started when he was 10 years old. He used to come home from school and work with his cousin, who is uh, a beautiful stitcher, but is now getting older and losing his eyesight. But uh, Hani learned from 10 years old all the way through until now, and which uh, you can see the beautiful work that he does, which is hand-stitched, hand needle-turned applique. Uh, I, make, uh, I make this work, this is like 10 meters of Cairo. I make it a long time, and I like my work too much. And I am now in this exhibition in England, and I am very happy with this exhibition because everybody see my quality and my, my work. And I make uh, some uh, design of bird now. This uh, is this like a tree of life. This very important design in Egypt and very beautiful. This is like tree of life. This is a very famous design in Egypt. Tree of life. So how long would this take you to make? I make something like this for two months and a half. Just the work for this one. Because look at these birds here. After finish the material of bird, I make all these lines also handmade. 
nothing machine, no machine, just handmade work. And you design all of this yourself as well? Uh, yes, I make the design in my head, and if I have some new designs, I put in my computers in my head, and I do it by paper, and after that, you can see in the material. It's leftover squares, which I have cut up at the end of a project. I put them in a bag until I can't close the drawer, then I take the bag out, and I play on a wall. This is all, as you can see, blue ones. It looks like waves, it looks like water. All the red ones, not as much as the blue, so it's flames. And then all the browns, so it looks like earth. And it's as simple as that. I've just machine quilted in places, I've hand quilted in places. And I think if you catch the light, there's a few beads. And I just do them for fun. And I've actually done the wind, and it looks like that. Yeah. But I haven't finished it, so I couldn't put it in. So watch this space. Next year. Next, next year you might get the other element. You might get the wings. But um, it's a nice thing to do. It's play. It's made with fabric weaving, so using bondaweb and all these um, pieces are woven together using a shaded fabric. And uh, I've tried to enter things in the show here at Utoxeter for a number of years now since it started and have always been supporting it. It's good to see so many people and there's a wide variety of quilts and embroideries. So I haven't seen all of it yet but I look forward to it. We started off as a group uh, sometime last year and decided that we wanted to exhibit our work and one of the things we thought of that would be really good would be to support the Quilt and Stitch show um, by entering um, our quilts into the show but we wanted to have a joined up theme so that's why we decided that we wanted to have a theme and we chose the theme of transitions um, but we also wanted to choose a format um, a particular size and it was based on the grid format that you can see here with three down and four across we could have a complete quilt that wasn't made up of a grid or we could use the grid as a basis. As pieces. Okay. So, so they're that's all how about it the size? They're all roughly the same size. Yeah. Um, and I say Leah's has done hers is based on Hong Kong. Um, and I say she's used the complete grid format. Um, some of the others have done um, four panels. Yep. And then there's others that are whole quilts as well. This is uh, a quilt made by Isabel Holland. It's part of the Transitions um, uh, group quilts. And one of the things Isabel wanted to highlight in Transition was um, transition and change, the movement of pieces. And she really likes the idea of what she would call an interactive quilt. And although it doesn't go with the theme of a quilt show, the idea of inviting people to touch a quilt and move things around on it, this is exactly what you can do with this quilt. Um, so if I wanted to, I can take this piece off here. And I've never done this before. So, and I'm just using these magnets to put so is it other pieces. So it's sewn onto the quilt and magnets sewn onto the piece? Yes, we've got a magnet on the back of the piece there. Just, and so you can just have a lot of fun with this. Um, as I say, Isabel would have loved the viewers at the quilt show to be able to play with this, but she felt it was unfair to invite people to play with this quilt, and you know, whereas other quilts they can't touch. Okay, so this is your job. This, this is my change, job. Every now and then, I have to sneak up here when people aren't looking and just move things around in whatever way. We can. And then, of course, the hole in the middle, what we could do is if I can find the right spot. Very clever. Is we could even do that. Very clever. So, Isabel comes from the sort of world of embroidery, so she's really coming into quilting with some um, different and unusual ideas. Okay, this is um, this was a big surprise to me to uh, turn up this morning and find this quilt here. Well, in fact, it was a customer came to me and said, oh, I love your shop upstairs. I said, I haven't seen a shop upstairs. Um, again, this has been made by my good friend Helen Conway, and... She just loves working in this theme at the moment. She works on lots of shacks. She's actually made a real live shack that was on show in Belgium recently. Um, she did start about this big, 
and as you can see, they are growing. Um, just wonderful. I think she's inspired very much by the South African shantytown shacks, and um, they're just beautiful. Um, and I love the detail here. This is the African fabric shop. This is the real African fabric shop. Um, we bring in fabrics from all over Africa and beads and buttons, all sorts of things. And I guess we have a really nice time going out, meeting people who have become really good friends, um, the dyers, the bead makers, all of those people, the traders that we deal with. Uh, they've become our good friends and we enjoy going out, seeing them and having a good time with them. People often say to me, oh, how can you um, sell on this stuff? But I love the fact that if I sell it, then I have to go back and buy more. So that's fabulous. Our shop's in um, Richard Arkwright's original cotton mill in Cromford and uh, we've been trading at this show for several years now. Uh, my initial in impression really is that it is busier today uh, than previous shows have been. There certainly seem to be a lot more footfall, which is good. <laughs> so. This is a Ruby Deluxe sewing machine which came out uh, in the last part of uh, last year. It's got a fantastic stitch system that uh, allows any sort of thread to be stitched on the machine in sewing or embroidery without any issues at all. We've actually had the machine stitching on organza uh, with a metallic thread without a backing without any problems at all with the stitch quality. It's a sewing machine and an embroidery machine and I'm currently in embroidery mode, stitching out a quilt design, which can then be put together to make into a, a beautiful quilt. As a sewing machine, you have every conceivable stitch type you would need from dressmaking, quilting, soft furnishings, handbook stitches, button holes, you name it, it's got it. This is a quilt that has been done on an embroidery machine. So um, these are designs that are hooped up and stitched out with an embroidery machine. So it's not free motion, it's a set design that you select and put into the hoop. These designs are um, the same sort of thing, but they've got ribbons underneath. So you place ribbons underneath the design and then the machine embroiders over the top of the ribbons. So you'll see that there's embroidery stitches on top of the ribbons here, and on the panels here. The panel along the edge there is done um, again in the embroidery machine, but in a hoop called the endless hoop. So it's a continuous hoop. So the machine will stitch one section and then stop and you'll move the fabric along in the hoop and it will carry on stitching to create a border. I'm Jenny Rundle and this is one of my quilts, New Hats, Old Friends. It's based on an American poem where when you grow old, you grow old gracefully but you wear a red hat and something mauve or purple. And I came across these squares and I just fell in love with them because it reminded me of the poem. And on here the, you can see there are some words and one of them says, you know, dear, I am a size six. I just choose to wrap myself in cellulite to protect the beautiful package. It's like bubble wrap. And I think it's wonderful because we've got all these lovely hats and you can embellish it how you want. So this is my old hat, new friends. This is Oriental Charm and it was based on a hanging that I first saw in Scotland and fell in love with the blocks. They're lovely geisha ladies and they were gold faces. And I had this fabric that went with it beautifully and you've got the Celtic fabric meets the Japanese fabric. So I called it Oriental Charm and it's based on a, on a design called Fazaz Quilts. And these I've fallen in love with and I like this one, it's my favourite. My name is Sharon Garrick and this is my quilt which I've titled Russian Baubles. It's actually taken from an idea from Australia of stained glass patchwork but instead of using plain fabrics which is the norm for this I've used just patterned fabrics. It's laid down onto um, a violin base, an adhesive one, and the only stitching is actually where I've stitched on the bias onto here and then put the latticing. So it's, it's a bit like constructing a jigsaw puzzle um, and you have there's 12 different fabrics and you just work your way through it. It's a, a technique that I really like and I find very interesting and produces lots of different results. And with the design, they're all designed by me and you can actually move them around and interlock them in different ways and thus producing new patterns every time. This is a really nice quilt to see at this particular show because throughout the year of 2012, Patchwork and Quilting magazine 
ran a monthly series called a block of the month quilt and it was a calendar quilt. So each block represents a different month and it was designed by Ros Johnson and what she did in the magazine was every month there would be a block and then every month there would be a small project using the same technique. So it was a really fantastic and very popular project throughout the year when people made the quilt and they also made lots of different things with 12 different techniques, which was quite unusual. So this was a quilt that Di Huck, the previous editor, saw, loved and got Ros to put it in the magazine and it's been a hugely popular project. Well, this is Judy Mendelson and Julie Briggs, okay? And it says, meet the editors. (laughs) So we've been doing stints here at the Quilt and Stitch Village um, there's Julie Briggs, your editor of Sewing World. There's Judy Mendelson, I'm editor of Patchwork and Quilting magazine with my name spelt wrong, but never mind. Anyway, what do you think of the sort of fence, the sense of the vibes of the show so far? I think it's been lovely so far. Really, so really nice, nice, nice yep. people. I mean, everyone seems to smile on their face. Very positive. So very, very positive. Very positive yeah, absolutely. Thing. Yeah. Um, now it's the title's Quilt and Stitch Village. Um, and that was deliberately so that it could incorporate more than quilt. Mm. So I know you might not have had a chance to get to see the embroideries yet, but can you tell us a bit about how the embroidery sort of section is? Or I, I, I mean, I, my impression is the embroidery is the stitch part yes, of, of, the, of the title. Yeah, yeah, but then I think there's a big crossover it's between it anyway. Yeah, there is. Quite a lot of quilts have stitchery on them, yep. you know. Um, I think this, the whole thing, you know, it's having two two separate magazines, but I actually think there's a lot more crossover now as well. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I'm guessing there's, there's some hand embroidery there as well, which it's is, you know, yeah. it's a whole, it's a, a massive subject, really. It is. Um, and, but I think there is a lot more crossover than, you know, than yeah. people imagine, really. I, I, I suppose the fact that it's the British Quilt and Stitch Village, it tends to be perhaps a show that people would expect it to be a quilting show. Yes. But, but, the, but like I say, think there's, the stitch bit is actually probably be the bit that can grow a bit more. I was going to say, yeah. I think it's the fact that the word stitches in there means it has great hopes for expansion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. one of the advantages of, of under the same umbrella of Traplet, there are magazines yes. in the craft titles yeah. that can work together. Yeah, that's right. Like Patrick and Gordy and yeah. Sewing World and the other, you know, and the other craft titles. Yes. Um, and I think that I think the word stitch in there gives it great potential. 